Cuddly, but what are they called? Answer these multiple choice questions and see if you can name the young ones. Are you ready? Let's go! What do you call a young sheep? A. A fluff ball. B. A lamb. Or C. A ram. Take a guess. Yeah, good job. What do you call a young fox? A, a kit, B, a cub, or C, a pup? What do you think? What do you call a young horse? A, a teeny, B, a calf, or C, a foal? Your answer is... <laughs> Great job! Thanks for playing Young Ones. Time to rise and shine!
surprised and wake up to knowing that God provides for you. Hey there, and welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Lauren, and today we are going to rise and shine to the truth that God is a provider. You are going to hear the phrase rise and shine quite a bit because we all rise and we all can shine. Now let me explain a bit more. We rise by waking up to the truths of God and who he is, like when we learn something new about him. And we shine by showing that truth in our everyday lives. This can be like what you think about in your own head and also how you act towards the people around you. While we talk, I'm going to make an omelet because nothing says rise and shine like the taste of farm fresh eggs mixed with all different kinds of toppings. Mmm, my stomach is growling just thinking about it. You see, the best way we can learn about how God is a provider is by taking a look at the Bible. It is full of stories showing us different ways that God provides for his people. To be clear, he doesn't always provide in a way people want him to provide. But when we read the different stories, we see that what he provides is always good. One story I cannot wait to share with you is about a man named Boaz. And you can read his story in the book of Ruth. This is going to be so good. Let me whisk this up really quick. And then I'm going to pour it in my pan just like this. All right. Now, let's watch this cook. And while we do, I will tell you all about Boaz and how he woke up and shined what he knew about God being a provider. Boaz was a kind man who lived in Judah. He was a rich farmer who owned a lot of land. Because he had so much farmland to care for, he also had a bunch of people who worked on his farm gathering the grain. In those days, God's law or rule said that after the workers had picked up the grain, if they missed any, they were supposed to leave it behind for the people who didn't have money or food to gather. This way, everyone in Judah would have food to eat. Isn't that such a kind law? Boaz liked that law. He liked being able to give food to the people who didn't have any. But the story gets even better. One day, a poor woman named Ruth visited his farm to collect the grain that had been left behind. She had just moved to town with her mother-in-law, Naomi. They didn't have any money or food. Boaz was happy to help them. He told his workers to drop extra grain for Ruth so that she and her mother-in-law would have plenty to eat. Ruth and Naomi were very thankful for his provision. And guess what? The story doesn't end there. God provided for Ruth in still another way. Ruth and Boaz ended up getting married. So here is a story that shows us how to rise and shine to the truth that God is provider. God was generous with the people by giving them laws to make sure everyone had food. Boaz knew this and trusted that God would provide for him. Then Boaz shined this truth about God by giving away even more food to help Ruth and Naomi. And that's a true story of how God provides for us so that we can provide for others. It's time to turn and talk. The time when we turn and talk to your group about what we are learning. And as always, be respectful and present. When you hear this chime, it's video time. Turn to your group and discuss how this story shows us that God is a provider. Can you think back to ways God has provided for you and your family?
ready to play Simon Says Extreme. <laughs> you know the rules. You have to do whatever Simon says to stay in the game. If you don't do what Simon says, or you do something Simon doesn't say, then you are out and must sit down. Even if what Simon says doesn't match what you see on the screen, you always do what Simon says when Simon says, Simon says. Simon says, stand up. Simon says, right knee up. Simon says, right knee down. Simon says, left knee up. Simon says, left knee down. Simon says, both knees up. Simon says, just kidding. Seriously though, put your right knee up. Oh, Simon didn't say. You're out if you put your right knee up. Simon says, duck. Simon says, jump. Simon says, dodge right. Simon says, dodge left. Simon says, duck. Simon says, jump. Simon says, dodge right. Simon says, dodge left. Simon says, duck. Simon says, jump. Simon says, dodge right. Simon says, dodge left. Simon says, duck. Simon says, jump. Simon says, dodge right. Simon says, dodge right. Ooh, who dodged left? If you did, then you have left the game. Simon Says, great job, everybody. Thanks for playing Simon Says Extreme. Mm. I mean, look at this beauty. Hopefully by now, you are a little more awake to knowing that God is a provider. But you may be wondering what God provides for us today. Does he provide only for grown-ups? I mean, you wanted the new iPhone, but he didn't provide that for you. Those are all great questions to ask. And it's great to wonder about God. God is a provider, but that doesn't mean that he provides everything we ask for. But it does mean that he provides what we need most. And you can read about it in the Bible in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those four books are called the Gospels. The Gospel is the true story of what God provides for all people, and that's a friendship with Jesus. You see, God created the world and the people in it to be perfect and to be friends with Him. But then sin entered the world thousands of years ago with a man named Adam and a woman named Eve. Once sin entered the world, God knew not just Adam and Eve would struggle with sin, but everyone after them would too. This made God sad because sin is what keeps us from being friends with him. Because God loves us and is a provider, he knew we needed a way to be saved from our sin so that we could be friends with him again. So that's where Jesus comes in. God provided his son, Jesus, to come to earth, live a perfect life, die on the cross for all of the sins back then and still for us today. And not only that, God rose Jesus from the dead and Jesus went to a place called heaven. And heaven is a place God has provided for each of us who choose to follow him. Heaven is a place where we can spend forever with God, where sin and sickness and sadness don't exist. Can you even imagine such a magnificent place? All right, let's try this out. Hmm, it's almost there, but I think it needs a little bit more salt. That looks better. So then why not the iPhone or the new Nikes you've been dying to have? Those are all fun and sometimes you do get those things, but when you really think about it, is that what you really need forever? Can those things save us from our sins that we know we're always going to struggle with? Or is a friendship with God and eternity with him what you really need? God has already provided you with everything you need. And here's the thing, he also wants you to want him. So it's up to you if you choose to receive the gift of being forgiven for your sins, having a friendship with God and spending forever with him in heaven one day. No one can make that choice for you. 
Not your parents, not your grandparents, not your small group leader, neighbor, friends, or anyone. Just you. If it's something you want to know more about, ask your small group leader or your parents today and they can help you take your next steps. What a way to shine. And if you aren't ready, that's okay too. You can still shine the truth that God is a provider. So take some time now to think about that. Think back to the story of Boaz. How did his story teach you to trust that God has provided for you and now you can provide for others? Go and shine the truth that God is a provider. Talk with your group about ways you can take what you now know about God being a provider and shine it in your life. Hopefully you had some time to come up with different ways you can shine the truth that God provides through your life. One way we can do that right now is by standing to our feet and worshiping God by singing to Him. While we sing, think about the words you are saying and know that God is in the room with you. Sing those words to Him as a way to thank Him for being our provider. It's a new day. I'm so alive with you. I'm feeling so alive with you. You're making all things brand new. So crazy to believe that nothing's ever gonna come between all the love that you have for me. It's a new day, and I'm feeling so alive with you. I'm feeling so alive with you. Face is all that I see. You're 
so alive with you. I'm feeling so alive with you. You're making all things brand new. So crazy to believe that nothing's ever gonna come between all the love that you have for me. It's a new day.
God is a provider. Hey guys, Anthony here. And I'd like to share with you something very exciting that we are doing together as a whole church. For the next several weeks, all of the adults and kids at Traders Point will be learning about the generosity of God. And we'll be praying about how we can show that generosity to others. And that's what it means to rise and shine. And so this week, while you're at home, share with your family what you've been learning and ask them what they've been learning. And you can pray together as a whole family. What is God doing in your family? And also, what can he be doing through your family?